I want to bring in John Sandwig, who served as acting director of ICE under the Obama administration. This was in the period around 2013-2014. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, let's get to the facts here. Number one, why are these problems getting worse, including the treatment of children uh, that you see under this, under this administration? Well, a big part of this is the management of this crisis that the administration has undertaken. We have them cutting off aid to Central America, which is a critical component to stop the flow. Uh, and we have them continuing to apply this deterrence-based approach where we're going to try to tough our way out of this, when the fact is we cannot make conditions tougher on this side of the border than they are with the people are facing in Central America, where you're looking at the highest murder rates uh, and governments that, you know, no economic opportunity and governments that are incapable of keeping their people safe. And your so, view, just to, to pause on that point, is that they are deliberately trying to make it harsh or painful here. That's certainly part of the strategy, right? It's a detention-based approach. Listen, you got 300 kids sitting in a, in a facility that was built for adult males, and candidly, built only to detain adult males for a very short period of time. Kids have no business there. Why are they there? In large part because the administration is engaged in what, a quasi-form of family separation where if a child is coming across with someone who's other than their parent, it could be an aunt, it could be an older brother, they are separating them ostensibly out of fear of, mm. you know, that they're being trafficked. But in large part, this is an effort to defeat what they believe is an effort by smugglers to game the system by creating fake families. All of this is compounding the problem. None of it, most importantly, is solving the problem, which can only be solved with more resources uh, surging into HHS and more immigration judges to quickly process these asylum claims you, so people who don't have good claims can go home. Do you think the Trump administration is wrong about their view of, of what the smugglers are doing uh, regarding bringing children in and families in? There's certainly some of that, for sure. Uh, absolutely. And listen, that's something you have to be very sensitive to and very, very, you know, attentive to try to detect that. The problem here is you have families that, you know, in situations where it is families, it's just not an immediate family member. Uh, and so you have two choices. You either, one, let them, you know, basically release them through the normal process, screen them, check them for criminal histories, do all of your investigations, make sure they don't pose a health risk, uh, and then put them into deportation proceedings where they can go see a judge. Right. Typically, they will reunite with their family. And what, you're, is you what you're talking separate. about, just to slow you, you're, you're running through it so fast, I want to slow you down. Sorry. But what you're, no, don't be sorry. I'm just saying what you're talking about is, again, whether or not the, the dial is up or down, a responsible process that honors, tries to honor the human rights and the due process rights of these individuals. Uh, because you and the Obama administration took criticism from some uh, for your deportations, your crackdowns, what we are describing that seems to be a big difference, what we've, what we've reported, is whether that's done through the due process system or, or against it. Uh, and so I want to give you as well the benefit, uh, the, the president took a shot, as I mentioned repeatedly, uh, at the Obama administration, which really is at you. You were charge of ICE for part of this. Take a look. We've ended separation. You know, under President Obama, you had separation. I was the one that ended it. Now, I said one thing. When I ended it, I said, here's what's going to happen. More families are going to come up, and that's what's happened. But they're really coming up for the economics. But once you ended the separation, but I ended separation. I inherited separation from President Obama. He's talking about your department uh, that you ran. Uh, is that true or not? All right, that's categorically false. Uh, there was no family separation under the Obama administration. In fact, the policy was the exact opposite. Do everything we can to keep families together to the point where we even paroled back into the United States parents so they could reclaim their children. I, I don't know why he keeps saying that. It is categorically false. Uh, Jason, I want to play for you as well uh, another Another ICE leader, you know, this is what's in the news now, is who's in charge of ICE and how do they talk. This is the incoming one in a DHS that I think it's very fair to say uh, has been just ripped up by chaos at the, at the leadership level. Uh, the use of these acting directors, the, the real lack of a plan, uh, as we've been reporting throughout tonight. Here's uh, one of the new ones serving Donald Trump making, making the case. Take a look. A judge has given them a final order of removal, which they are not complying with. I've asked them to come to ICE. I don't want to send ICE agents to their home or work, but they refuse. They won't come to us and work with us to, to in, in, a, in a humane, compassionate way, remove them to their country. We have no choice to get them. Uh, that's the ICE director. And Jason, again, I try to be as careful, fair as I can here, but it seems to me that he's going on Fox News today and he's blaming uh, migrants for what, what he refers to as uh, they won't work with us in a humane, compassionate way. So we have to act like this. He seems to be blaming them uh, for what he elliptically acknowledges as a lack of compassion. 
Yeah. Right. Well, Ari, this is evil. It, it, it's, it's just plain evil. It is a human rights violation at every single level, and it's masquerading as administrative failure. The fact of the matter is, ICE, if they actually kept their paperwork together, they would be able to communicate with these families on a regular basis, but they don't. They either catch and release, separate the families, or leave people in absolute limbo so they don't even know who to communicate with. So to turn around later and say, well, I have no choice but to kick down the door, wave in a 4-4, and drag your whole family out is an indicator of the lack of empathy on the part of this administration. And anyone, whether they're working in ICE or a member of Congress or even local legislators down there that justify these human rights abuses and the deaths. We have an administration that is arguing against giving toothpaste to children. Anyone who advocates this kind of behavior is evil as well. It is an absolute blight on the history of this country. Mm. Michelle, uh, Jason, putting it unsparingly, uh, and I want to talk about uh, the reporting, as I mentioned, about what is happening. This is uh, from Vox, just walking us through where we got to, which mm -hmm. uh, uh, former ICE Director John Samick was just referring to. The problem is not, they write, this very controversial Texas facility. It's this hastily cobbled together system of facilities the Trump administration has thrown together in the last several months as the unprecedented number of families and children coming to the U.S. without papers has overwhelmed the system design to swiftly deport single adults. Uh, the point that Mr. Sagri made about why you shouldn't put kids in those facilities in the first place. Right, and just to make a quick point, that um, the, the man we just saw speaking on Fox is now the one who is going to take over this system right. of, um, you know, sort of baby jails, basically, that they're using because they can't process people out into the HHS system fast enough. You know, so just today, the the, the head of, um, the acting head of Customs and Border Patrol resigned. That guy is moving over to take the job, right? So you see this huge amount of turnover even in the midst of this crisis. But indeed, the problem is that none of these, you're not supposed to be under the, um, Tenants of the Flores Agreement, which was this yep. settlement in about kind of how long you can hold children. None of these kids are supposed to be in detention for more than 72 hours. They're supposed to be moved very quickly into HHS, into the Office of Refugee Resettlement. And the fact that there is a lot of people coming at the border is just not an excuse for failing to do that, right? I mean, the reason right. a, a president, any president, has crises and is tested by unexpected events. And right. your failure to rise to the occasion can't be justified by the fact that those events were unexpected. So I think it's, I don't know that we, I think it's probably a combination of malice and incompetence, but, and, and I think it's also important to note that we know about this particular facility because it was being investigated, um, you know, for its compliance with the Flores Agreements. We have no idea how many other facilities out oh, there that are, 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 are like that, that yes. are kind of I'm, where exactly. children are being held in similar squalor. No, and that's why we're zeroing in on what, what we can learn and what we have factually. And mm -hmm. also to your point, Michelle, we only know about them denying soap and blankets. Uh, as a legal claim because they've been fighting to not have a monitor oversee a certain facility. So this is, uh, sadly, I think for those who care about uh, the treatment issues, this is, this is just a, a slice of the picture. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.